Another year has now come to an end, and it is time to look back at the worst games that I reviewed this year. Since I like to end this year on a positive note, I'm going to do the worst first, and then do my top 10 best list next, just like always. This year I have only reviewed games for the Wii U and the eShop. So if you're wondering why I only have Wii U games on this list, that's why. Because I've only reviewed those. I mainly focus on reviewing third party games, but you will see that I review popular ones as well. Now I do want to just remind you, this is my opinion on what games that I didn't like. So with that said, Number 10, Yoshi. This is one of those 30 cent specials that were available on the eShop earlier this year. I think this game is completely worth 30 cents. However, it's $5 again. And for that price, it is not worth it. The title has limited gameplay and very little replayability. You would think a game called Yoshi would have you controlling, I don't know, Yoshi. Nope, you're controlling Mario as he starts his new career as a plate shuffler. Man, that guy just can't keep a job. Maybe it has to do with the fact that he's always taking off work to go rescue Peach. He must get fired from a lot of jobs to do that. You can only call in sick so many times. Why can't Yoshi be doing the swapping? Why not leave Mario out of this game completely? Now I guess you could make the argument that this game is called Yoshi because of the egg power-up, which I'll get into in a second, but it's the most powerful move in the game. And just like when you get a Tetris where you have to get four rows at the same time, they name the game after it, but I still think it's a little weird. Number 9 New Super Luigi U. All right, put your pitchforks down. I do love the idea of adding in levels to an older game, but it was the new gameplay that I didn't like. The short timer was just awful. It made me rush through the levels too much. Where's the fun of making new levels if we can't spend the time exploring them? Most of the levels were too short and over way too fast. Then that's because of the timer gimmick, and that's too bad. This could have been a great idea for an add-on to this game. New Super Luigi U is the add-on to New Super Mario Bros. Is you. It adds all new levels and a playable character to the existing map for only $20. The story starts up with Mario in the toilet after eating one of Peach's special cakes. When Bowser attacks the castle, he kidnaps the princess, big surprise there, and hurls Luigi and the Toads out of the castle. It's the same plot as the main game, only this time Mario isn't playable. Number 8 Disney's Infinity Now I know this one might surprise some of you. I did reluctantly say you should buy this game, but that was mainly on the little wee viewer's enjoyment of it. Now months later, I see that he hasn't played it once since, and that makes me take another look at it. The toy box mode was the only worthwhile thing in this game, and now you can play that on the iPad. The collectible toys were a pointless gimmick, and the single player game is kind of boring. Only the characters that are supposed to be in those worlds can go in those worlds. So you can't have a car person go into the monster's world. And I thought that was probably the most disappointing thing. If you're going to have toys that you can switch out, make it like the Skylanders and make it so you can bring in any toy into any world you want. Yes, but the whole point is it's got a story meant for said characters. What is the point of the toy? The whole toy feel? I mean, they could have done this game without the toys. I don't think they could have done the Skylanders game effectively without the Skylanders toys. I can absolutely see this game not needing the toys. I agree with you. Number 7 ESPN Sports Connection. This title felt like a worse version of Wii Sports. While there was some fun in the tennis, and I still can't believe I'm going to say this, soccer gameplay, the rest of the games were not that great. Unlike Wii Sports, which didn't have the advantage of the Wii Plus technology, this game does, and it actually makes it much worse. At no time does it feel like you have the control on how you were hitting the ball, because all the swings felt rough and unnatural. What's even worse was the very lazy outfielders. When you hit the ball more times than not, the outfielder would just pick up the ball and throw it to the pitcher, and you would be safe at first. Even if he hit it to the first baseman, he would throw it to another base and ignore me as it got on the base, or just throw it to the pitcher. It was dumbfounding on how stupid these outfielders could be. If they missed the ball, they would throw a fit and cry, but no one would actually get the ball. How I didn't get a home run every time is amazing to me, but I guess this is some kind of elementary school rules that I don't know about. No, no, no. If the fielder misses the ball, he can only get two bases. We don't want to make the outfielder feel bad because he missed the ball. Because everyone's a winner. Number six. The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. The main problem with this title is that it felt like it should have been a shooter instead of a stealth game. Because of that, the game is really monotonous. It basically ends up being a sneak up to a walker, stab it in the head, and rinse and repeat. The zomp, excuse me, 
walkers are a joke. They pretty much were the same characters over and over again. So unless they're cloning walkers in some laboratory, there shouldn't be so many alike looking living dead. Now I did like it when you hurt them sometimes, damage would show on their bodies. But when they die, they just kind of fall flat over most of the time. It was just so silly and unnatural. And then they just vanished. Why in this day and age can't we keep the bodies of our slain opponents on the ground just at least for a few minutes? Is this game really pushing the Wii U's graphical card? Because the graphics themselves are surely not doing it. Number 5 Barbie's Dream House Party. Another year, another Barbie game. This one has to be one of the worst of all the Barbie games that I've reviewed. And yes, I've reviewed quite a few. The mini games were just boring, the controls were just hit and miss, and there was really nothing any child might enjoy in this game. The girls decide to play a game when Raquel, who by the way I pegged as the evil one immediately, messes with the computers in the house. And Wheatley from Portal 2, who the girls now call Closet, shuts down the house and makes them play a game. Poor guy. I guess that's what happened to him after Portal 2 ended. Ken found him and spray painted him pink and shoved him into Barbie's closet. Did he really deserve that? Yeah, kinda. Now this is a four player game. Even if you're playing alone, there are gonna be three other players. If you don't wanna just play with the computer, you're gonna to need to have a Wiimote depending on how many people you want to play. Now there are nine rooms in the dream house that you can play games in. They're all very spacious. Even the bathroom, which has a huge open area in the middle. But one thing is noticeably missing, which is the toilet. I guess it's possible that it's hidden away with the wardrobe, which is accessible in every room in the right corner, but it is still kinda of strange that it's missing. If I was her, I would put the toilet in the middle of the room for no other reason than it would be cool to shout out, I am pooping in the middle of the room! Behold my glory! Number 4 Hot Wheels World's Best Driver This game was just strange. It felt like it was just a training mission and the actual game would start up soon. But it never did. It had some crazy missions like driving up a wall or using a car to push objects around. The controls weren't that good and none of the missions were really any fun. While most of the training missions landed in the okay this might be something I might use to train with sort of feel. There were some missions out there that were just downright bonkers. Like a level that had you going through an obstacle course wipeout style. In what reality would they ever set this thing up? And when would you ever actually come into a situation where this would be handy? Or how about using your car to move boxes or equipment? How lazy can you be? Worse yet, they encourage you to dump it in the ocean. So not only is this guy lazy, he's a polluter as well. Where's Greenpeace when you really need them? There's also a mission where you could use a snowmobile to do tricks off a skateboard ramp. This is one of the ones that I thought was probably okay because I know there's trick snowmobile events out there. But there's no way if they set this thing up that someone's not going to come out dead. Ooh. Put an ad on Craigslist. We're going to need a new driver. No. Number 3 Spongebob Squarepants Plankton's Robotic Revenge If you had told me that they ported this as a PS1 game to the Wii U, I would have believed you because this title is awful, both graphically and in gameplay. It's repetitive, boring, and completely wastes the Spongebob license. There is zero creativity in the level design. The way the creators decided to change up the level designs and make you understand that you're in a new world is to change the color of the world, and that's about it. It was one monotonous level after another. Worse yet, it's just a shooter, really. All you do is kill enemies and push buttons. Repeat this for three hours and you have SpongeBob SquarePants Plankton's Robotic Revenge. The whole time I was thinking if they just took out SpongeBob, they could just add in any other license and it would feel the same. If they decided to re-release this game as, oh I don't know, uh, the Snorks Robotic Revenge, they could do it with minimal effort. Because the atmosphere really doesn't feel like a SpongeBob game. Number 2 Game Party Champions! The whole concept behind this title is that you're playing games that you might kind of find in an arcade style amusement area, like Chuck E. Cheese or Boomers. The games take way too long to load and had very bad controls. The problem is they use the gamepad for everything, even for games where it's incredibly awkward to play it that way. There is also a party mode. You spin a spinner on your gamepad to find out how many spaces you have to go on the board. Then they'll have the player go to the game that they landed on, and they'll have to complete a certain challenge in 25 seconds or less. One of the more irritating things about this is that it could take up to 25 seconds to boot up the game that you're only going to play for 25 seconds. That is just ridiculous, and really boring for anyone who tries to actually play it. Okay, I'm showing you guys the actual time it takes to load up just one game from the multiplayer game, and it's still going. Hope you guys have a book or something. Sorry, I know this is kind of boring, but you know what? This is what I had to deal with playing this game. 
Bum, 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 bum. We're waiting on this loading screen. This game really sucks. Number one. Family Party, 30 Great Games, Obstacle Arcade. This one was actually very hard to decide. Both this one and Game Party Champions could have had the number one spot, as they were both terrible. In the end, I decided to go with the game that was actively lying to you from the start. The fact they actually advertise this as 30 great games is galling. The games are terrible. However, I doubt they would have seen many sales if they had called it Family Party 30 Terrible Games Obstacle Arcade. But even putting that aside, the graphics looked bad, the controls were almost unplayable at times, and it was just not any fun at all. There is not one great game in this collection. There isn't even a good one. The best you could say about one of these games is that it's playable. And you could really only say that on a few of the games. Now I am tipping my hand on the verdict of this review. But that's only the tip of the problems with this game. Now let's talk about the graphics. They would look bland and boring on a Wii title. But for this to be a Wii U game and look like that, it's just embarrassing. Also, what's up with that purple smog in the background? Where is this place, in the middle of LA? Well, that's it for my top 10 worst games that I reviewed this year. Next up is my top 10 best games that I reviewed this year. Thank you guys for watching.